see if this is going. Yes. All right. Uh, well, well, guys, it's it's a pleasure to ha have Rodrigo Sandoval with us. Uh, as I had already told you, we, we've been in class for an hour already. Uh, so oh, oh, I see. Okay. I've already anticipated that you would be here with us. Oh, this was this is my alarm clock to to phone you. <laughs> so let me see if ah, I think I, I can shut this thing off. Uh, and uh, so I was uh, telling them that it's been quite a while that we in the, the uh, Association of Information System, Systems community, and mainly in our Latin American Caribbean chapter, we wish to have professors from different countries involved in other professors' lectures. Uh, and I think that this is the first time that we're doing it. Maybe we needed this virus for things to happen. But it's, it's great, maybe we're, we're doing, maybe this is history here. Uh, maybe this is something that we will start doing uh, much more often in the future uh, and, and, and hopefully it's not going to be just something that happens while we are all at home uh, uh, trying to you know, be, being close because we are so distant from, 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 from everyone else. Um, well, Rodrigo, uh, uh, the reason why I invited you to, to be part of our class today is because we are discussing, we are, we're today we are discussing the ways in which collective, the collective intelligence or the, the wisdom of the crowds can be used to, to w w th th that's the main issue of our whole course, but today we're focused on e-governments or, or governo eletronico. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and, and of course, I, I know that you've been involved with this discussion for quite a while. The paper that, that they read was a paper that you wrote in two, two, 2012, so quite some time ago. Uh, and we wanted to first know from you a little bit of how, how you think that things evolved since then. Okay, well, thank you very much for the invitation, Alexandre. I'm, I'm really honored and very happy to be here in your class. I hope that we can do this very often with other professors or with somebody else. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my English. It's a little rusty. I, I keep a long time that I don't practice a lot uh, speaking in English. Uh, I read a lot and all of that, but uh, maybe some words, if, if you don't understand, please tell me. Um, the paper that you read is a paper that it was based on the idea of research applications, apps. Uh, we want to understand how how is the apps in the governments being used uh, in different governments around the world? Uh, in that time, we think that apps were the best um, uh, instrument of governments to expand this idea of uh, uh, e-government around the world in order that uh, e-government become something more mobile like uh, this idea of mobile government. So this paper was a first attempt to understand in such direction. And as you will see, we find out that very few governments in 2012 have these uh, developments. Nowadays that change a lot. Most of the governments has an application for different kinds of services. Uh, some of them has some applications just for uh, health systems, other for public services, and other for some something else. But we we leave this um, path of research be more on the idea of um, e-services and the idea of uh, making interactions and dynamics about the different. Uh, types of government, not only mobile government uh, requires uh, this. We look for participation in government, uh, using social media, for example, uh, participation in government using other chats, different, uh, different chats like, like the ones that we are holding right now. And uh, of course, the direct idea of uh, interacting with the government using an online service. So we, we call this something like a dynamic 
uh, e-government perspective. And we have done more research on this dynamic of the government uh, using different kinds of channels of diffusion and participation. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that is concerning us in, in this COVID-19 COVID, uh, times is that uh, when we see that governments are, uh, it's weird that we think uh, like that, but th th governments are using much more uh, data on us than, than, than we, 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 well, not that we thought possible, but that we thought that they would use. Uh, so there's a lot of surveillance happening. For example, here in Brazil, the governments from different states, every day they show how many how many Brazilians have obeyed the you know the or have complied to the idea that they have to stay at home and they even give percentages of that based on information that they get from from the the telecom operators and things like that. So uh, of course it's it's good to have that data and 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 it's good that governments can use that kind of data to see if their measures are working well. But at the same time, it shows how much we became, uh, um, uh, uh, how much surveillance there is uh, on us, right? How, how much th th this is being used to, Big Brother is watching us. Uh, do you have in your research, do you see that kind of uh, uh, concern and, 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 you know, technology is empowering, but at the same time, it's controlling? Well, uh, um, actually, I'm doing some research about that. We, we are leading our research to the artificial intelligence and government right now. And one of the main issues that I have been studying from five years to now is uh, open government and this idea of data justice. And especially this idea of data justice is about uh, how, can, how can we use the data and how can we as uh, citizens allow others to use our data or the data that we produce. And of course, this includes also these inequalities on the data generation and the data use. A poor people generates data, but he or she is not able to recall or to manage that data. And the governments are using, the governments and the companies are using that data without our knowledge or without our permission. And actually, uh, the, this problem of COVID-19 has uh, placed into the discussion this uh, manage of data in many forms. One of these forms is that I, I was calling to too uh, long ago because I was saying that e-government is an important matter for everybody um, and they don't take care about this. I mean, the governments only need e-government until now that services has to be done online and that products has to be made online and that we have a, a lot of things that we have to do mandatory because of this circumstance online. And on the other side of the coin is this idea of how many data government uh, around the world needs to make decisions for online purposes uh, and for, uh, for physical purposes, like maintaining the people uh, in their homes and uh, penal, penalize them. Uh, if you want, I, 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 I found a paper, well, no, it's not a paper, it's actually is just an, opinion article from Medium that um, talk about uh, surveillance in many other states. Mm -hmm. And in Poland, there is a, a very huge restriction. They, they need to, to, to send a message to the government when they are home. Mm -hmm. And the government uh, check that message in their GPS system of the phone that makes them available at home, really. <laughs> and not only that, they need to take a picture of themselves in their home and send it with the message. Wow. <laughs> so, so there are a lot of things that are happening right now about this idea.
The, maybe and the, the discussion of surveillance, data surveillance is a very good one. Sorry? No, I was going to say maybe if you, you could send uh, uh, this link to us uh, afterwards. You can send it to me and I'll, I'll, I'll share with uh, the students afterwards because this is really interesting. Yes, yeah. yes of course. And one of the um, interesting things there, uh, Rodrigo, is that, uh, I mean, governments are doing that for a good purpose right now. But it, after we accept that they use this technology for this purpose, we are already granting them permission to use it for other purposes afterwards, right? Well, yes, uh, but actually uh, the, the problem is that they are using right now and they are getting used to that. And, and the problem is to stop that <laughs> in the future, in the near future to stop that or to regulate that. They are not be very willing to regulate such a good thing for them. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, but on the other wise, uh, I, I seems, it seems for me very difficult to control people if they don't have that kind of technological media or technological devices to do so. Uh, so right now, for example, in Mexico City, there is uh, the idea of uh, just to analyze if there are a lot of signals from 50 uh, cellular phones in an area. Mm -hmm. So they are just watching that. They say it so, but maybe they are doing more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they found that 50 people, that is the, the maximum people that can be gathered in this time, uh, that they are going to send the police or somebody else to disseminate these people around. Uh, but uh, in other countries, this is more difficult. And the uh, time when we develop a technology, it's, it's, uh, we know that these are simple things to do uh, with computers, but when you already develop it to measure or, or to figure out when there are more than 50 people in one place, it's exactly the same technology with just a different uh, number to say that I want to measure if there are more than five people, right? Uh, so we're building the technology in a direction that will allow for those things uh, in the future. And right now we are doing that with, oh, okay, it's for a good cause. But whatever is used for a good cause in the next, uh, uh, in, in the near future or in, in the, even uh, further ahead in the future could be used for, for other reasons. And yeah, we, we'll have to discuss that a lot for sure. Uh -huh. Well, I, I, um, I'm, I'm agree with you, but this, this idea is, is more important because it is about the internet governance. How can we rule the different ways that we share information through internet and how internet is going to be regulated? Um, not only the data that we generate, is the data that we share and that is uh, distributed and used by the different governments around the world. Mm -hmm. And this discussion of the data governance and the internet governance is something that we have not made yet. And it comes aside with other discussions like the use of artificial intelligence to have decisions making. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I also have a blog, uh, I mean a podcast, but it's in Spanish, uh, about this and I'm saying that if the, we have used robots in the hospitals and the nurseries homes, maybe we have less people with this disease. But this idea of um, fostering the technology to create robots uh, with this is, is something that is now uh, at the beginning, uh, is something that is growing. But I think that in the next decade or in the few years, governments are going to be used more about these technologies and these devices as a common device to make some things. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that is part of the same discussion. How is going to be the limits for a robot? Mm -hmm. Is a robot allowed to uh, decide if one people die or lives in an emergency unit in a hospital, or is a robot allowed to 
let them pass to be treated in the hospital because they have COVID-19 or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, those kind of decisions are very difficult right now for people that is having this pandemic uh, responsibility. Mm -hmm. But if we have uh, attached the technology and the e-government rules and all of the experience of the government information systems on that, maybe we can have a better situation and maybe we have more uh, efficient use of the small resources that we have for it in, in those situations. Yeah, uh, can, can I just... Sure. Uh, yes, go ahead. Observation. Yeah, I think that the way that the humanity do the things is about technology. First, we create the technologies and after that, we start to discuss the limits and other things to uh, what, for example, what you said, Professor. What can a robot do? Can he decide if or not? Th this is the way. We first create the technologies and after that, we start to discuss uh, the limits of that in our lives. Probably it's something in this way, I think. Yes, but that's the way that it works. <laughs> we build first the technology and then we uh, we figure it out how can we stop them or how can we regulate them. You know, Rodrigo, and that's, that's something, like, something like Skynet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like that, like Skynet and something like that. But I, I think that the idea is a little bit more complex. I mean, uh, the idea is how can we decide as humans, not as machines, uh, which algorithms or which kind of input or data input it will be used for those machines, even if it is software or hardware to do the job. I mean, that's, that's our job. Because we can have a very good intentions like, the, like our governments right now. But uh, some people of our governments, they, they just want to rule by their political agendas and their decision making is based on their political ideologies or principles, uh, not from the scientific or the human point of view. Um, and, and that's the, the, the big point. Professor. I, I was browsing to your Google Scholar and I have seen a, a chapter of a book that you that you have written, Rise and Fall of Digital Activism in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yes. So 2000 to 2019, uh, I believe that probably had a lot of similarities with what's happening in Brazil. And if you possible, you can tell us a little bit about this chapter. So you're stalking me right now. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We're all doing that all the time. Internet. <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of time at home, right? What, what else would we do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be happy to share the, the chapter with you. Uh, it, it, it is a chapter that gathers all my research from 10 years in digital activism. It, it runs from 2000 to 2000, I don't know, 20 years to 2019. And it gathers several pieces of research about how Mexico has been used uh, social media to become a digital activism until the last election, the last presidential election. That, that's the idea of the chapter. If, if, if this is useful for you, I will be happy to share. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to make a correlation with Brazil because I, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah. And in don't, fact, don't I don't have to, to stalk uh, Rodrigo right now, but I've already, I remember that I've already read, uh, read a paper by Rodrigo a few years ago in which he was comparing, I think it's comparing Mexico and Brazil and, and the ways that e-government was going here and there. But that was maybe five, six years ago, Rodrigo. I don't, I don't know if you have been doing that afterwards. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I just, uh, I have a friend, um, besides from you and from Alexandra and from 
somebody else. Uh, but but uh, I, I wrote a paper. Uh, Alexandra, he means Maria Alexandra, professor yes. at Santa Vargas in, in Sao Paulo. Yes. Uh, it, it was a paper comparing open government ideas in Brazil and Mexico. Uh, because uh, uh, I, 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 I forget exact his name right now. I have the face, but I don't have the name right now. Uh, uh, he, he was the, the Open Government Partnership um, advisor in Brazil or something like that. And we, we, we met in a conference and we decided to write a paper about the compa comparing these two ideas of open data in government um, so the paper was about that and that's the only one publication that I have uh, from Brazil I, I can say so far <laughs> okay. uh, Rodrigo maybe switching a little bit to a, a different uh, a topic I mean we, we were too focused on uh, COVID-19 right now but one of the, the issues that we've been discussing lately with e-government is that uh, our technologies are pushing, of course, citizens into becoming or doing more of what used to be done by governments. Uh, are we becoming, do you have the feeling that we are, we are, we are not seeing government as a, a, ser a service provider any longer and we, we feel that we, are, we as, as citizens need to participate more than, than in the past? Do you have this feeling that, that this is actually happening or uh, the technology definitely pushes us that way, right? Well, uh, we have the two, the two options. Um, uh, the first one is that uh, we have the long, long time ago question, uh, how citizens want to interact with the government online? Because we see very few interaction with the government and the citizens. Uh, we find out with several research we did uh, two years ago, a survey, we did uh, focus groups in Mexico, and we find out that many people want to join the government uh, digital services or use, but the problem is that they don't find enough information or enough drivers to become part of that uh, interaction with the government. Uh, and the other side of the coin is that the government is doing these services or these publications, but in their own view, using their own language. And they said, well, I think that this service or this data is, will be useful for the people. But actually it does not. I mean, those two visions are very different. The people needs this data and the government does not provide the data. And uh, the government thinks that the people has this information needs and they think that they providing this uh, information. So this gap is, is a pro problem that is, has not been. And the other problem from the two sides is the lack of use of technology. I mean, they are afraid to use the technology. The governments, uh, in general terms, they said, if I open the government services, I will have a huge amount of uh, requirements or requests to do so. Lose control. Uh, yes, uh, how can I control, how can I manage this? And the people on the other side, the citizens, they said, I don't want to pay with my credit card for the government online. I'm afraid that they have all my data or I don't want to do that. Uh, I think that this last um, problem, it will change after this. I, I really think because, because people and the government are, are aware that this is not bad. I mean, the technology is not as bad as they expect. And we need to trust that. And, and it's a tool to make the things more efficient, to make the things more easy, to save costs, a lot of things. So I, I think that this uh, problem is going to change in the near future, very near future. Uh, the other problem of these different kinds of needs of information needs from one side and the other side, that is going to take a little bit longer. 
because the governments are not easily going to change their perspective of how many data they release. Mm -hmm. And the people is going to get used to make other kind of transactions and other kind of things using different tools from the private sector rather than the government sector. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was Clear with uh, this one of the things answer. that we noticed that open data in general it has all those principles that yeah. show. I, I don't know if, if, if this is was clear or you want to elaborate more. You yes, know, uh, you uh, I just had an, another question for you. You hear that is open data has those principles of how open it could be and and, and how uh, of course it, 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 we one expects it to be as open as as possible. Have you noticed that? Uh, governments are becoming more open or not because I remember I mean with Obama things were seemed to go one way when you see Trump and and some of the the presidents that we have around the world these days it seems that we are probably shifting towards a different direction I think that we are going in the opposite direction <laughs> right now uh, at least with the Bolsonaro and Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador governments from these populist left-wing governments, um, I think that is completely the opposite. I have been doing um, every year I did a research about open data. I monitor the open data in my in the government web pages in my country. And the last two years, I mean, the data has completely Bad. fall down. I mean, they, they are not opening more data. On the contrary, they are closing the data and the, the data is more in the shadows or hijacked by the government, I can say. Uh, but that is um, unstoppable. I think that that is going to happen anyway, anyhow. I mean, maybe now in COVID-19 uh, times or after it, uh, we'll probably turn, we'll close much before we open again, right? Uh, I mean, all strengths are towards, you know, national governments becoming stronger and uh, maybe globalization and this idea of opening uh, um, vanishing. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I, 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 I really, I don't, I don't want to say what is going to happen in the future because <laughs> it's changing so fast. Well, we actually don't even know what is happening right now, right? There's so so much fake new, uh, news and so little in which we can really trust. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I don't know if the data that is the government is presenting every night about the, the people that is infected and all of that is, is open data. Hmm. I really, I, I'm, I think that uh, that is uh, something there that, that is not right. Um, but uh, it's a problem that uh, we need to face right now. But in the, in the coming months, or maybe in the next years, maybe, and maybe some governments or some people is going to be more restricted on the information. Mm -hmm. Because they want to control all of the pandemic effects in terms of economy and in terms of political size to, to try to leverage and to, to diminish the impact of the, of the problem. Um, that, that is one thing that is going to happen. Uh, maybe in that same time, a lot of data rises, um, maybe not, I don't know. But the idea of openness is still there. And that idea of openness is going to open sooner or later the, the the data that is, is is happening in our countries because internet and the data management uh, by the information systems is there so sooner or later those data are going to be emerged in somehow I, I think well i don't want to forecast something else but i think that that is the idea that is always coming into my mind about open data in Mexico. A few years ago, uh, the idea was to become transparent. And right now, the idea is to become open government. So they move from this small idea of transparency to a more open idea of openness. 
but, but so, open government is much bigger than just transparency, right? Because you're not showing what you're doing only. You're actually, uh, with open government, you, you also want the citizen to, to be more participative, no? Isn't that it? And accountability. Yeah. And the idea of accountability is also there. Right. Okay, well, well, guys, do you have any other questions? I know that Rodrigo has a class right after talking to us here, and I don't want to keep him for too well, long. I have a couple of minutes. I have a couple of okay. minutes, okay. maximum 10 minutes, so no problem. By the way, uh, before, uh, while, while they're still thinking of their questions, I, 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 now, now I was uh, checking here on Google Scholar, and I found out uh, the paper that you, you, you did on, on, on comparing Brazil and, and Mexico was with uh, Fabro Steibel. Uh, it's actually, yes. I, I understand it's this one here, right? Yes, that's the one. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so may, may, maybe this is something that we, we, we could uh, try and, and, and go over and, and see how things uh, evolved since then. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe one of my students or myself could contribute with you on that if you, if you find it interesting uh, and, and, and maybe then we're, we're making history twice. We're making history here because we are, uh, we are finally doing things that we've been discussing <laughs> on doing for, for almost 10 years now. And at the yes. same time, we are doing that and proving that. By doing that, we can get to a second stage that is improve our research connections as well. <laughs> yes, of course. Do, uh, do you have access to the, that paper? Pardon? You, do you have access to that paper from Yes, that, well, I, I, just, I just had access to it through, through Google Scholar somehow. All right. Yeah, so well, it's, if this if is you a don't, I can share also yeah. with you. No, uh, we definitely, we want you to share the, that paper that discusses surveillance in, in Poland and, and yes. uh, other parts, yes. uh, and, and I can include a link for the students uh, here. And another thing, uh, uh, Rodrigo, uh, do you mind? I mean, we usually do our, our classes uh, privately in the way we, we, it, it goes to YouTube, but it, it keeps private. But considering that this is such a, uh, at least a historic moment for, for both of us, uh, the, uh, you know, being able to, to share a class, uh, well, or, or, or being able to have you in one of my classes uh, right now, do you mind if we make this open on, on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I'll be very, very happy to do that. Unfortunately, because, because for I think me, that this can stimulate some of our colleagues to do the same, you know, or, or maybe yes. uh, even us doing this in a more uh, often uh, or turn this into a more often practice. It's these days. It's so easy. I mean, it's just pressing a button, even if we are in our regular classrooms, right? Uh, if you have a computer there, you press a button, and you have someone else's class being part of your class. I think this is something we should take into the future as part of uh, COVID-19 inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it will be a good start. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a information systems class right now. Uh -huh. I'm teaching uh, on political sciences more. Uh, so, but anyway, I mean, we, we can fit with um, a part of, of my classes on, on that. Maybe next year uh, I will have a, a class of open government and that will be included in some of the topics are information systems. So I, I will be very happy to have you there from time to time. I mean, a couple of times during the semester, a few minutes, and that will be great for my students to have. Yeah, it's always a possibility. I, I keep telling, in fact, I, was, I had told my students that it's good that you see a researcher's face on, you know, talking to you and you notice that there are people like you are. So, uh, <laughs> Many times our graduate students think that uh, they're not going, you know, they, they, they think of, of their sources as uh, being unreachable. But we are, you know, people like everyone else, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, I don't know if uh, uh, you guys have uh, any other questions for Rodrigo, but th this is the time. Otherwise, I, think. I have a question, Professor. Yes. Rodrigo, do you, do you think that uh, uh, what is the best model for a government to share data? It is the Obama's model to open a lot of raw data and wait for the, the citizens do something like that, or, or do the app or system itself and provide, uh, provide services? 
Okay, uh, well, thank you very much for the question. It's a very good one. Actually, the idea of um, opening data, it depends of the country. I don't, I'm not sure that there is a, um, a model that is going to be the best model for doing so. Every country has their challenges, their obstacles. So it's very difficult to say that this model is going to be the most useful for that. There is a lot of research about business models, uh, frameworks, different kind of frameworks that will help to open data in the governments. Uh, and every government must adapt those kind of business model into their legal systems. And also that comes along with the different regulations that they have, because if they adapt one kind of business model, they need to align this business model with um, the, their law, their, their regulations. On the other side, there is a more recent idea that is called open government ecosystems. And these ecosystems includes the business, the, the business model, the law, uh, and the technology, um, the different devices or different ways to program in, uh, in order to become more efficient, the idea of open government. Um, uh, well, this is, this is another option yeah. to build an, an ecosystem in that. Yes. I don't, know. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think that we'll, we're using Zoom here and it gives us 40 minutes. It's just telling me that we are over the time, so it is going to show.